hello and welcome or welcome back if you've joined us before uh, for one of our previous webinars. Today I'm delighted uh, to be joined by Sebastian Wall, uh, EOTA president. Sebastian, hello and welcome. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Fantastic and we'll hear from Sebastian in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to do my admin stuff so please bear with me only a couple of minutes on this so what are we talking about today we're talking about the pathways between the eu and the uk markets but side twist uh, we're looking at it from a european perspective with sebastian and, and iota the reason we're doing that is because uh, not just the bba but we've heard a lot of information from inside the uk and from a uk perspective and what it means for uk organizations and rightly so because i'd say the majority of people joining are within the uk but it'll be so fascinating to see it from the other side the other the other end of the stick the other side of the border uh, so with that in mind let's get cracking let me do my admin and intro part and then i'll hand over to sebastian with all the the good stuff for you so we run a lot of webinars in fact we've got one each week um just about in march uh, you can find the current and future webinars if you go to our website. Um, there's a trendy little graphic at the bottom going on. Uh, if you go to our website and look for the webinars link, look at the up and coming webinars, as you'll see, um, as it's a bit slow there, <laughs> um, you'll see in a second, future webinars are just down there. And also we've got previous webinars, if you scroll a bit further down, if you click on any of the links to either sign up or watch them back, you'll be able to do that. Alternatively, instead of keep on checking those, what you can do is subscribe to the mailing list. Um, you follow that link, uh, which you'll be able to get after the webinar, um, or go onto our website, scroll to the very bottom and sign up for the newsletter. One of those two and you're in, and we will send you uh, each month uh, the list of webinars that's happening that month. So like I say, March is particularly strong, but I'm really excited for today. Okay, a little bit about the BBA. So the BBA have been going for 55, 56, 55 years now. Uh, the main premise has never changed. It's to help within the construction and manufacturing industries to build confidence in the solutions, the designs, the creations, the services implemented throughout the entire supply chain. And the BBA looks to develop long-term partnerships. So it's not, it's not a fly by night by any way, shape or form. And the idea is that uh, we partner with people within the construction industry supply chain for continued growth, not just in UK, but in global, global marketplaces, including the EU. So it's apt that we're talking to EO today. Important to note that the BBA will always remain reassuringly impartial. That is critical. One thing that people sometimes don't know is that the BBA is actually a for-profit organization limited by guarantee. So what that means is that the BBA looks to reinvest any profits they make into the industry as a whole for the benefit of you, me, and the wider stakeholder community within construction. But how do we do this? How do we help the industry? Uh, the BBA is more commonly known for its PAC or its BBA agreement certification, but product approval certification also includes reproduction of that, those certificates um, and HAPAS, which is focused on uh, UK roads. The BBA also does testing of products, audit and inspection, management services such as ISO 9001, and more recently, UKCA marking, which we'll be talking about today. Okay, just some, some fancy numbers for you, just to give, to put into perspective what the BBA is all about. Uh, so the BBA has actually issued over 6,000 certificates and it rep it's represented in over 72 countries. Um, and the big number in the bottom right, we do over 8,000 annual inspections and assessments. So what we do is a lot and we take it very seriously from certifications to inspections to assessments, but we're here for the greater good of the construction industry. Okay, that's enough about the BVA. What are we going to cover today? Before I hand over to Sebastian, just give you a run through. So Sebastian is going to talk about EOTA, who they are and what they do, uh, a little bit about Brexit and what that means for the industry, 
will focus on pathways into the EU and into the UK market. And then we'll look at some of the conclusions we've discovered throughout this presentation and outlook to the future and what that actually means. And then finally, we'll finish with a, a quick Q&A. So if you have any questions now or throughout the entire presentation, use the Q&A function in this GoToWebinar um, chat and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. If we don't have time, I promise you we will get back to you with an answer, be it through EOTA and Sebastian or the BBA and the experts there within. Okay, that's enough for me, but please use that chat functionality, massively important. We're here to help and support and answer as many questions as possible. Right, okay, so that's enough from me. No one wants to hear me talking this morning. It's all about EOTA. Um, ETAs, UKTAs, UKCAs, all that kind of stuff. So I'm delighted to hand over to Sebastian. Sebastian, you should be able to take control of the screen now. Um, Sebastian, yep. away you go. Yes. Okay, I hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, just confirming. Okay, everything is working. So good morning again. Although for me, it's 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 the afternoon. Uh, because I'm sitting here in in Warsaw, in Warsaw, Poland. So, uh, good morning again. Um, today, a short presentation on IOTA and ETA route. How do we see our role in supporting the free trade of construction products into the UK market, into the European market, especially after Brexit? Uh, the plan of my presentation you already know, so definitely I will not repeat it and I will just go to the presentation of IOTA. Uh, IOTA was uh, established some 32 years ago, oh, we are old, as uh, under the construction product directive as a group of um, approval, European approval bodies. At the time we were issuing European technical approvals, so the organization was called European Organization for Technical Approvals. When in the middle of 2013, the construction products regulation changed the European paradigm from product approval to performance assessment, we started to issue European technical assessments and the organization uh, got the name European Organization for Technical Assessment. Uh, fortunately, the acronym for organization remained the same, IOTA, and the main product for the main product for the technical assessment, uh, the acronym remained the same. So it was called the ETA and now it is called ETA as well. Um, the IOTA, this is the organization uh, that is behind the whole ETA route to the CE market. In fact, IOTA is a network of technical assessment bodies. Now we have over 50 members. 46 technical assessment bodies that are designated by the member states and those technical assessment bodies are entitled to issue ETAs and observers from Luxembourg, Netherlands, United States and of course United Kingdom after the end of, of 2020. However, I need to remind you that if you wish to apply for an ETA, you need to contact it, uh, directly the technical assessment body in the European Union. Uh, our tasks are defined uh, directly by the Article 31.4 of the CPR. Uh, this is uh, the task of coordinating technical assessment bodies and the stakeholders. Uh, for the stakeholders, I mean the European Commission and the industry. This is very important. We also ensure that the best practices are shared between all the stakeholders and technical assessment bodies. But our main task is to develop and adopt European assessment documents and to ensure the procedures that will enable uh, this development and adoption. And of course, the final result should be the ETA, this is, uh, which is issued by the technical assessment bodies. And for you, very important information, IOTA is the uh, party that is responsible for public availability of the EADs and the ETAs, I will, uh, in, uh, <coughs> I will uh, show you a slide uh, a little bit later on. Uh, how we are organized? Uh, EOTA is a pretty simple organization. So in the foundation, we have technical assessment bodies. 
all the institutes designated by the member states, all the institutes that uh, are issuing uh, European technical assessments. They are supported by the communication working group, the group that prepared this beautiful presentation for me, and the financial working group. But the most important group is the technical board. This is the place where all technical uh, discussion takes place, where uh, all the technical information is shared between, uh, between the members. So this is, this is the key point in our organization. Then we have also a very important part, the secretariat, the colleagues, the colleagues that are based in Brussels, then the board of directors chaired by the president, and on the top, general assembly of all the members. So this is the organization. As I said, we are very simple, which means that we are pretty easy to be managed. Of course, apart from the pure CPR, we have a little bit, oh, or we have wider ambition than the CPR. Uh, we think that we could promote trust and transparency in the European construction product market. This is very important. Uh, what we can do is to develop harmonized technical specifications that would support uh, product innovation and improvement. And what is important for us is our expertise and cooperation. As I said, IOTA is in fact a network of highly qualified technical experts. This is very, very important. Of course, we need to be impartial and confidential. Ha, ah, Brexit. Of course, probably you have more information than me already about Brexit. However, from our pers perspective, we see that this was the situation that affected free trade of construction products from the European Union to the UK and in the opposite way too. Of course, it affects the activities of manufacturers, but also the laboratories, the certification bodies, the assessment bodies that are supporting the industry. This is pretty clear. Considering the direction from the United Kingdom to the European Union, it was pretty simple. We had no transition rules. So from one day to another, uh, the ETAs and the certificates issued by the UK notified bodies and the European uh, and the technical assessment bodies, they lost their validity. The same concern the notified bodies and the technical assessment bodies. They lost their status just like, like this. Of course, we are all business oriented. So immediately after Brexit, we created a special route for transferring ETAs issued by the former UK TAPS to the European Union technical assessment bodies based on existing documentation. This route is as simple as possible. Now we have a total of 440 transfers of ETAs from the UK technical bodies to the European Union technical bodies um, registered in our database. This process is, of course, ongoing. And what I have to underline, uh, this is a very smooth transfer due to very good cooperation between uh, our partners from the UK and our technical assessment bodies. This is very important because the Brexit didn't change anything in this respect. Before the Brexit, we had a very good contact. Now we have very good. Now we have a very good contact as well. And what needs to be underlined, the whole process of putting the product into the European market didn't change and has not changed. But of course, the definition of the European Union, this has changed. This is, this is of course, the set issue in this, uh, at this moment. For standard products, uh, this remains the same according to the construction products regulations. If you have a, a product covered by the harmonized standard, you need to proceed with the ABCP process at the state, uh, assessment and verification of constancy of performance. Then you go to the declaration of performance and to the C marking. Of course, what is important, you, to, you, you need to use the services of notified laboratories or notified certification bodies in the European Union when relevant. For the products not covered by the harmonized standard, one additional issue is the ETA, which needs to be issued by the technical assessment body designated by the European Union member state. 
Of course, in the whole process, when we're relevant, we need to use the notified certification body service. Our route seems to be pretty, pretty simple. We have four major main steps of the procedure, which starts from the product, your contact with the technical assessment body, EAD development, I will comment a little bit later, technical assessment body issues the ETA, and of course, then you are entitled to, uh, to do up the declaration of performance and to see mark your product. This procedure is available for all products not covered by the harmonized standard. If you look into the Annex 4 of the CPR, you have certain group of construction products and they are not limiting, uh, limiting us in the, in the whole procedure. So you can get the ETA for all construction products not covered by the standards, which means for products uh, fulfilling the definition of construction product according to the, to the CPR. Such a, such a flexible procedure, it allows integration of innovative products new applications were relevant and of course novel new assessment products related very frequently with those, with those applications uh, just for your information if you are interested more in the procedure just visit our website and as far as i know this this will be also the model for uk ta procedure just a little bit more information what could happen when you request an ETA uh, to the technical assessment body. In case, of course, when the colleagues from technical assessment body, they discover your product is covered by the harmonized standard, they cannot issue an ETA. However, when the product is covered by any of the existing EADs, European assessment documents, the ETA can be issued immediately, of course, after assessment process. But if your product is not covered by the European assessment document, it might be developed for you. It might be developed for you. It makes the process a little bit longer. However, you need to remember that this EAD development, this EAD is free of charge for the manufacturer. The whole cost of the EAD development is covered by IOTA and by the European Commission. Of course, you need to pay for the ETA. This is really clear. Well, as the ETA is a voluntary route, I need to apply some marketing. You know, but um, in fact, yes, the ETA is the only route to the C marking for non-standard construction products. This is true. Also, our procedure allows the manufacturer to make an influence on the whole on the whole procedure on the whole process so you as a client you as a manufacturer you have an influence on the content on the da and on the ead developed for you because the ead practically for new products is a tailor-made specification in comparison to the other ones this eta route yes it offers relatively short time to the market this is clear for innovation this is the only and the quickest route and of course we asked some years ago about the benefits the manufacturers you can see on the screen what they said generally uh, our perception i think it's, it's it's pretty good we have a very good reputation the etas have a very good reputations and apart from being a marketing tool in some cases the eta seems to increase your sales levels this is not to be forgotten and what is even more important the eta is accepted in all european union member states by the authorities it's also accepted by the professionals and of course well the eta is also widely accepted outside of the european union this is this is pretty clear as the independent third party assessment it's also trusted. It's also trusted. When you see on the market, the ETA is a trusted product assessment. And of course, what needs to be, what needs to be remembered, the ETA is a perfect tool, a perfect tool uh, when you plan to put on the market product which will be used in the sustainable construction or even uh, the product that you will call sustainable. We have some procedures for this. 
we have some procedures for implementation of BWR7, the sustainable use of natural resources, the BWR7 of the CPR. So we are, we are ready. Some statistics. If you look into the adoption of EADs, apart from the initial period, we developed more, we developed more or less 80 EADs per year. This is the number, uh, this is the number of the EADs adopted by IOTA. What is the refraction in the ETA? Wow, this is one, approximately 1,300. If we forget about 2013, this is 1,300 ETAs per year. You can see the peak in 2019. This is because of the fact that in middle of 2019, the last European technical approvals lost their validity. So it was the time when we had a lot of work. In fact, new European technical assessments, they have no limitation of validity. They have no date of validity. And what I mentioned before is our responsibility for publication of, of EADs. If you look into our website, you can see the database of, uh, of the European assessment documents. If on the screen you see the possibility to download, it's, it means that the EAD reference was cited in the official journal of the European Union. And this EAD you can download uh, from our website uh, without any without any problem. When the download option is not available, it, it means that uh, the, A, the EAD is already available for issuing of the ETA. However, the reference has not been cited in the official journal of the European Union. And if, as the manufacturer, you think that your product could be covered by such an EAD, please contact technical assessment body. Uh, they will clarify the situation. As regards the database of ETAs, uh, we have this full offer, as you can see. Um, however, the full text of ETAs are not available. You can find some of them uh, on the websites of, of technical assessment bodies, but EOTA is not offering uh, such an option. However, in our database, you can find all relevant information uh, for any of the ETAs issued uh, issued in the past, but technical assessment bodies. Just a summary, starting from the beginning of the CPR, it was 1st of July 2013, um, references to over 300 EADs have been published in the official journal of the European Union. What we did as IOTA is 500, over 550 EADs adopted. It means that they are valid for issuing of, of ETAs and, and we have more 300 more in the pipeline. As the result on the market, we have over 10,000 of ETAs issued by technical assessment body. You can see on this small map, uh, a market coverage. Uh, I think it's a lot, it's really a lot. Okay, now we change the direction, the ways into the UK market. As far as we know, the ETAs will be replaced by the UK ETAs, and this marking will be replaced by UKCA and UKNI marking and the end of after the end of, of this year. What is very important for you, the UK ETAs, they will be based on the EAD cited before Brexit, but it's possible to base them on the basis of uh, to base them on the EADs even cited after Brexit because on the request from the UK government, IOTA granted such a possibility, uh, such a possibility to the UK side. There are two preconditions for the UK TAP to do it. Mm, I mean, first of all, the EAD needs to be cited in the official journal of the European Union. And the second precondition is that the UK TAP needs to become our observer and to sign and to sign cross licensing agreement with IOTA. And it's my pleasure to say that BBA, our host today, uh, was the first observer, UK observer that joined us uh, after, after the Brexit. Some practical information 
for you just coming from our experience. First of all, as I mentioned before, uh, we cooperate as IOTA and technical assessment body because uh, I personally working for Building Research Institute in Warsaw, I have also this experience. We cooperate very closely with our UK partners, UK TAPS. So don't be afraid uh, if you are uh, a manufacturer from this or that part of the channel, uh, side of the channel, sorry, don't hesitate to, to, to contact your technical assessment bodies. Uh, we try to make the process easy. So from the UK side, uh, the content of ETAs and technical documentation will be used as a basis for UK TA. This is pretty, this is pretty clear. And we, as the technical assessment bodies, we also frequently share the information between the UK and, and, and European Union side. So if you plan to put your product on the UK market or in the European market, just let, uh, let your technical assessment bodies know you are planning to do it. They can plan ahead. For your information, our host, DBEA, is willing to accept uh, existing reports that come from the notified bodies certificates uh, for the system one, one plus and two plus uh, in the AVCP uh, procedure. But don't forget, as regards the CE marking, you need to contact notified bodies from the European Union and technical bodies from the European Union. So on both sides of the channel, I think now the situation uh, is a little bit more solved than, than before. However, uh, the problem could come when you have new assessment methods in the, in the UK, because the, currently the UK has no counterpart to IOTA as the organization. So we will see, of course, uh, what happens in, in future. So just to summarize the process of converting the ETAs to the UK technical assessment, for sure it's gaining speed. But once your system, the UK system, is fully operational, I think we will establish a procedure how to convert the UK technical assessment to the ETAs. This is something for the future. But for sure, IOTA will play an important part in this discussion. We are ready and happy to serve as a platform for a dialogue between the UK bodies, UK organization, if it occurs, and of course, the European ones. And last but not least, um, the CPR review. Probably you know that um, the construction products regulation, the European construction product, products regulation, is currently under review. We are expecting um, that the Commission will publish a legislative proposal and the end of this quarter, we will see what, what happens. However, EOTA as important stakeholder uh, wanted to share our opinion in a form of a white paper. So you can, of course, find it on our website. However, we pointed out very important issues that need to be dealt with within the future CPR that should affect the uh, adoption process and the publication process of, of EADs, the consistency of common technical language, and of course, we are the engineers. So we want to make the ETAs a little bit more technical than before. And this is the last slide of my presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, time for questions, and I suppose, Peter, the floor is yours right now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sebastian. Really comprehensive and detailed. Uh, I enjoyed that, seeing it from a diff slightly different perspective, um, because we're all we're all in this for the same the same reasons. So it's good to see it from a, a slightly different perspective. We've had a few questions come in, so just for everybody that that might have joined a little bit late, if you have any questions, use the Q and A function. We'll try and answer as many as possible. I know we're quite short on time, but if we don't get around to it, we will get back to you. Um, I want to go to uh, Ulrich first, who, who's asked a couple of questions. And Sebastian, as we said at the start, uh, before we went live, you're looking at it from the European perspective. So if there are questions you're unsure of from a UK perspective, 
we'll take that away and and we'll get in touch with with, with people with the answers um so there's no worries there but the, the first one um Ulrich asks is uh, when do you think the post brexit eads can be used for issuing a ukta and then a ukca mark I will. Okay, I'm unmuted again. Uh, this is this is a tricky question because uh, as IOTA, we gave this possibility to the UK gov government already. So the UK government has now a possibility to cite after Brexit, post Brexit EADs, uh, and this this needs to be my answer. So we did our uh, our part already. Now we are waiting for reactions for, from the UK government. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so moving on, but still with um, Ulrich, slightly different tangent here. Um, is EOTA actively engaged in smart CE marking? Um, any opinion on this? Yes, yes, we are engaged. Our colleagues from the Secretariat are actively participating in, in, in very different works on this. So yes, we are not only following, but we are we are engaged. So I think uh, soon we will uh, we will present some uh, special information on that. Fantastic. That's that's good news. Um, wait to hear more about that in the future. Uh, final one from from Ulrich, and then we'll move on. Um, is there any impact on the EU UK process and the ETA UKTA development um, expected from the revision? of the EU CPR? Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we don't know. So, so this is uh, it's very difficult to answer this question. We don't know the future form of the, of the CPR. However, due to the, I think due to the very long uh, transition period, this is, this is what the what commission already said that the, the transitional period for the future, uh, future CPR will be long. I think in this transitional period, all the issues related to the transfers uh, will be will be dealt with. So so don't worry. Excellent. Um, I, I think a, a few of these questions might be bordering on on the political, and and it's almost a wait and see. Uh, we've got one from uh, Giuliano here. Uh, do you have an idea if and when UK and EU will mutually accept test reports for the AVCP System Three? I don't know. I don't know. This is not the question for me, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. to be honest, uh, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the employee of the, uh, of the laboratory certification body and the technical body, I would like to know this answer, the same as you. <laughs> exactly. So and, and, and that's what... Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's what I mean by a, a little bit political and it, it's out of everybody's hands at, at this moment in time. Um, I'm going to move to uh, Jonathan uh, Ducker. And again, I think this is another we'll wait and see. Uh, just be interesting to get your, your take on it. Um, those, um, so he asks, why isn't there a mutual recognition agreement to accept each other's competency? Why can't a UK tab apply to become accredited for CE marking tests and vice versa? Um, is it all just political? Will there be a MRA eventually? This is a very good question. This is a very good question. Uh, so we are all waiting for for the answer. Hopefully, the solution will come as as soon as possible. This is also my personal thing because after the end of 2020, as I said in my presentation, it was just a break or something. We, of course, as from the other side, we tried to to fill the gap as much as possible. However, without some legal decisions, you cannot do anything anything more. So. As the business-oriented organization, of course, we try to help our clients, but the next step is, is definitely for the politicians. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got one more question here, um, but before I answer that, Jonathan asked Jonathan Ducker asked another question, but Jonathan, if, if you're still on this webinar, uh, I'm going to get somebody in the BBA to come back to you on that. But, um, because it's more UK related than it is um, EU related, although it's it's compatible with both really, but I think the BBA will be better in answering that one. So we will get back to you on, on, on your question. Um, final one then from uh, Young, and Young asks, on the CPR review, 
what are the opportunities and challenges on ETA route to CE marking from the EOTA perspective? Uh, of course, we don't know because we don't know the, the form of the CPR review. However, we are trying to do everything uh, to support the ETA route. We believe that this is this is very important and supported by the by the industry. So, first of all, via our white paper, position papers, we are trying to show our relevance. And I fully believe the CIOTA route will be kept and fully developed under the future CPR. I'm sure. Fantastic. Um, that's the final question we have. I think some really interesting questions there. The, the overriding feeling from, from my perspective is that there's still a fair few unknowns that we need to rectify. And I think that will happen throughout this year and, and onwards. The most important thing that I'm taking away is that both EOTA and the BBA are collaborating, discussing things, chatting. So if you do have any questions, queries or, or anything, please do contact either EOTA or the BBA um, because we do collaborate and, and, and uh, on various things and we do help each other out in terms of answering questions that either doesn't know. So that's kind of my overriding message uh, for everybody that's, that, that's with us today. Um, so finally from me, Sebastian, thank you so, so much for your time. I know we've overrun slightly, but thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you very much. Um, for everybody that's on the webinar, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, I think. Uh, and like I say, throughout March, I think we've got four, if not five webinars coming out. Uh, so check them on the website. Once again, thanks for joining. Thanks for Sebastian for, for joining us and, and his time today and look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Goodbye.